I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. The following is a true story. It happened to me, so this is a first-hand account. I grew up in the hills of East Tennessee, and this event took place in 1978. I lived in a subdivision called Southern Heights. Back then, there were not as many homes in the subdivision as there are today. The area was surrounded by wooded areas and had lots of underbrush. The wooded areas weren't very big, so I imagine the creature that I saw was only passing through. When I was about 10 years old, my family was going about their nightly routine, as we always did on a school night. My brothers and I took our baths, brushed our teeth, and then were off to bed. My oldest brother and me shared a small bedroom, and we slept in a bunk bed. The bed sat beside the only window that was in our room. My brother always made me take the top bunk, but this would be the last night that I ever slept on the top. This night, I couldn't get to sleep, so I decided to open the curtain on the window to gaze out at the stars. But the stars are not what I saw. Staring at me, straight in the face, was a creature from a childhood nightmare. I was petrified, only a thin piece of glass separating us. Its eyes were dark and huge. It scared me so bad that my automatic response was to jump back, and in doing so, I found myself falling from the top bunk. When I landed, it was on my left knee. I shattered my left knee without knowing it at the time because I was so afraid and in shock of what I had seen. Yet I told no one. At the time, I had no idea what I had seen. I knew nothing of Bigfoot at the time, so I had nothing to compare it to. Thirty years later, after watching a TV show, I realized what I had seen. It was Bigfoot without a doubt. I only saw this creature from the chest up, but let me tell you about what I did see. First of all, I believe that this Bigfoot was a juvenile because of its height. I estimate that he was around five feet or so. It had dark brown hair and eyes. The hair was just a few inches long. The eyes were spaced much farther apart than a human's, and they were deep set into its almost human-looking face. The skin appeared black, what little I could see, and the nose was wide and flat. The lips were dark and full. Now that I look back, the creature only appeared to be curious and maybe harmless. I've only shared this story a few times, and I hadn't shared it at all until a few years ago. My name is Tim, and go ahead and share my name. Thanks. Hi, this is my story, but I'd like to stay anonymous, please. After searching for answers for 15 years, I feel like my encounter has been more of a curse than a blessing, and I struggle with it. I was 16 years old at the time, and my brother was 18. My encounter terrified me, and I think about it every time I walk out into the woods. It all started about 15 years ago on our family's 300-acre farm with the weird marks on our family dog after accidentally getting locked out of the garage at night. The marks that were on her back looked as if something had grabbed her by the skin on her back and squeezed her. The marks were in the shape of a hand, and on one side she had one hole, and on the other side she had three. It was very strange, but we chalked it up to some kind of predator. One morning, a few days after the dog attack, we noticed that the fence around the chicken pen was bent. The fence is eight foot tall, and it was bent down about four feet from the top, and it looked as if something had bent it down to step over it. Three chickens were missing. We have had the occasional raccoon or other nuisance animals that take chickens before, but we were almost always left with a messy carcass. My dad, myself, and my brother couldn't figure out what had done this or how it happened. My brother and I decided that we were going to go camp outside that night, about 50 yards from the chicken pen, with the hopes of possibly catching a coyote or raccoon trying to get in. We were woken up at 3 a.m. by squeals from the pig pen about 200 yards from us. We scrambled to get on our boots and grabbed our rifles and the spotlight, and we ran down there only to find the hogs, all huddled and grunting hard, as if something had just chased them. The next morning, my dad went out to do his morning routine of feeding the animals, and he informed us at breakfast that a hog must have gotten out of the pen. We told him that we had heard them squealing the night before, and that we had checked it out, but we didn't see any reason to count the pigs. He inspected the fence that morning and couldn't find any holes or where it could have gotten out. Again, we were left confused, another animal gone without a trace. 
So my brother and I decided to camp out there for the next few nights to see what or who was causing the trouble. The first night, everything was peaceful. The second night, we were awakened to the sound of heavy breathing outside our tent. We grabbed our rifles, jumped in our boots, and we scrambled out of the tent in hopes of shooting this nuisance animal, only to find nothing. We walked along the fence line of our back field with a flashlight and with our guns, and we still couldn't find anything. It took us about 30 minutes to walk the fence line and get back to where our tent was, only to find that the tent had been torn down. This sent chills down my spine, and I'm sure my brother's as well. This was too much for a couple of fearless teenagers as we ran as fast as we could to the house and we woke up our dad and I'm sure the rest of the house to tell him what had happened. That night, I remember sleeping with my bedroom light on. The next morning, the three of us went to where our tent was, where we found large footprints, which I would say were about 16 inches long. I remember my dad saying to himself, no freaking way. I've heard stories of Bigfoot, but always dismissed them as a myth like the Loch Ness Monster. My dad told us not to talk about these events to anyone and don't tell your sisters either because they'd be too scared to come out of the house. The three of us walked down the game trail not too far from where our tent was and that was a big mistake. We followed a game trail to the back portion of our property. We started down a ravine and about halfway down I got hit with a small rock on my right arm. I looked back to ask my brother if he had thrown it only to find him frozen, staring in the direction that that rock had come from. He yelled to my dad, Do you see that thing? I turned and saw it. It was standing behind a rock just up the hill. We all got a good look at it. It had very long arms and was about three feet wide from shoulder to shoulder. The head was round and it looked like it had breasts. I think it was maybe eight feet tall. The thing slowly backed up and out of sight. We quickly made our getaway through the ravine, and we're about 75 yards from the wood line when we heard the sound of something coming our way real fast. I was able to catch a glimpse of it running at us. It was running on all four limbs, and it was going really fast. It stopped a short distance away, and it never ran all the way up to us. We were able to get out of the woods and into the old farm truck and headed back towards the house real quick and safely. We haven't had a problem since that day, and my parents still live on the farm. My dad carries his pistol any time he goes out to the woods, though. He still hunts those woods, but we no longer go out during the night or early morning. Occasionally, during the hunting season, I'll hear a faint whistle or the sound of a branch being snapped, and I'll yell out, It's okay, it's your turn to hunt, and I'll head back to the house. I feel like I can tell when it's present because all the other wildlife vanishes. We never talk about this story when we're all together, and we still have never mentioned it to our sisters. My name is Paul, I'm 51 years old, and I don't care what anyone thinks. You can definitely use my name in the story. The year was 1974 or 1975, and I was 6 or 7 years old. I know most people don't remember things that happened that far back, but thanks to brain surgery, many memories have come flooding back to me. Most of those memories have been verified by older family members. This event happened in East Texas, in what was then the small town called Livingston. It's now a small city with a population of 5,500, and my aunt and uncle tried their hand at the farm life. Livingston is set right at the easternmost part of the Sam Houston National Forest, right next to the Lone Star Trail, about 70 miles northeast for a much, much bigger neighbor of Houston, which is where my family was from. My aunt had family in Livingston, so they bought 10 acres outside the town with an old two-bedroom pier and beam house. The land was surrounded by the big thicket forest, which stretches to the east coast. We lived in Conroe, about 40 miles away, and my parents decided that they would take my sister and I up to Livingston to stay for a weekend of true country living. My aunt and uncle had chickens, goats, and pigs, and my aunt's family had cows that they had grazed on some land close by. It was Saturday morning, and from what I remember, the women, my aunt and my mum, had loaded up and headed into town. They were going grocery shopping and planned to hit a couple of farmer stands that sold fresh vegetables along the way. They left the kids behind with the men. The men were keeping busy outside working on my uncle's truck. My dad and uncle were from Washington State, and they'd been raised on a farm, so this was fun for them. They'd been working in the city for the last few years and have been gone from the farm life for quite some time. 
That morning, we kids were inside playing and watching good old Saturday morning cartoons. We were being loud and having a blast. One of my cousins had to get up and go to the restroom. Soon after, we heard screaming from the hallway bathroom. It was my little cousin. She was screaming that a bear had looked in the bathroom window at her. I went flying into the bathroom to take a look at this bear. When I got there, I didn't see anything. I was just a kid and couldn't see out the window, so I climbed on the toilet to get a better view. And that's when I saw it. I was not looking at a bear. Nope, it was a huge, hair-covered woman. She moved away from the side of the house and was getting ready to enter the tree line, which was a short distance from the house. I poked my head out to get a better view, and when I did, she stopped and turned toward me just at the edge of the woods. She turned at her waist, not her head, and that's how I knew it was a woman because I could clearly see her breasts. She was covered in black hair, not like a bear because you could see her skin underneath. As I looked her up and down and then back at her face, she smiled. In the eyes of a six-year-old kid, it seemed like a smile. Her lips curled up and I swear she was smiling. And the thing that stuck with me was that she had the saddest eyes I had ever seen. The men came running into the house when they heard the girl scream. I was so enthralled with the sight of this creature, I didn't even hear them run inside. My father asked me what I saw as he stuffed himself into the window beside me. I had turned away to look at him as he came into the room just for a second, and when I turned back, the creature was gone. My dad asked me if I had seen a bear, and I told him, no, dad, it wasn't a bear. He said, but it was looking in the window, right? I went on to tell my father that it was a big, hairy woman. Dad, she had boobs. After trying to find it, looking through the window, I remember him running out of the bathroom and meeting my uncle in the living room. They went to my uncle's room and came out with shotguns, and they told us kids to stay inside the house. We watched them through the windows as they circled the house and then stood in the yard talking for a few minutes. My father came back inside and took me into the bathroom and he shut the door, and he asked me was I sure that it wasn't a bear, and I told him, Dad, it was not a bear, it was a big hairy woman. He thought about it for a few minutes, and then he told me that he was going to say that it was a bear because we didn't want to scare the girls any more than necessary. Throughout the weekend, we heard screaming and howling from those woods during the night. To me, it was exciting. I wasn't scared. I was a fearless seven-year-old boy, and the whole experience was fantastic to me. My father and uncle said the screams were from a cougar or a wildcat in heat. We didn't question that at all. If those men said it, we believed it. We went ahead and left Sunday night, and that was the end of my exciting weekend in the country. Later in life, I would learn that my dad and uncle used to hunt around Mount St. Helen in Washington State and camped around the notorious Spirit Lake. They had experienced nights of howls and screamings from the other side of Spirit Lake. My dad knew what this thing was. A few months after this event, my uncle landed a good job in Houston and I moved away. In 2016, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the frontal lobe of my brain. This is the area of the brain that controls memories and your subconscious thoughts. Later that year, doctors removed a tumor that had been causing blackouts and loss of memory. My memory slowly began to come back to me. In 2018, I was having breakfast with my mother and sister in my mom's kitchen. During the conversation, the topic of my uncle's farm came up, and a flood of wonderful memories came back to me. We laughed and talked all about the fun we had there. I asked if they remembered the bear incident. My mom said she remembered the event, but she had not been there. She had not thought about it in years. My sister couldn't remember anything about the farm at all. She'd been too young at the time to even know what was going on. The thoughts and memories ran through my mind quickly, and then I could see myself leaning out of that window, and the image of that huge creature flashed before my eyes. I was a bit shocked and actually felt dizzy. I made a promise to my father there not to say anything about what I had seen, and I kept that promise. I never even mentioned it at the breakfast table that morning. My father passed away 14 years ago. My mother loves to hear any memories that we have about him. Oh, how she loved that man. When the subject of my father comes up, she gets so happy and she listens intently. Months later, after the breakfast when the memories came back to me, I decided to tell my mother about the secret. 
After I finished telling her the story, I expected her to look at me like I was crazy, but she was crying. My family knows that I've always been obsessed with Bigfoot. That's how they describe it. I can't ever remember not believing that Bigfoot is out there. So my mom told me that it explains everything. My obsession, my belief in something that's not supposed to exist. Regarding the promise that I had made to my father, my mother said that that's exactly what he would do. He was so protective over the women in our family, and he knew there was no need to scare us. That's how my father was. He was a very good man. So many memories have returned that I've either suppressed or forgotten since the removal of the tumor, and this memory is one of my favorites. Paul Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you enjoyed today's video, here's one you don't want to miss. Also, if you have a story you'd like to share on this channel, email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I hope to hear from you soon.